Hi everyone, my name is Igor Kagan. I'm a nephrologist with UCLA Health, and today we're going to talk about chronic kidney disease, and I'm going to answer some of the basic questions that patients ask me. So first off, feel free to ask questions at hashtag UCLAMDChat. And let's get going. So the function of the kidney, we'll start with the basics, because if, the, if there's issues with the kidney, some of the basics are not going to be appropriately working. So the kidney is going to remove waste via the urine, regulate water, flow, maintain normal electrolytes, metabolize medications, regulate blood pressure, and also help maintain bone health along with help producing of the red blood cells, the hemoglobin. So one of the first questions I get a lot of time is that what is chronic kidney disease? Well, basically that is the gradual decline in kidney function due to damage to the kidney. So pretty much meaning that the kidneys are not working as well as they should be. Then I get, how do I know I have chronic kidney disease? That's going to be based on the creatinine. So the creatinine is a blood test that we're able to check. It's one of the basic blood tests. And uh, the creatinine is going to be a byproduct of normal muscle breakdown. So the kidney's job is to clean the blood, meaning that it's going to get rid of the creatinine. So when the kidneys are working well, the level of the creatinine is going to be low because the kidneys did a good job cleaning the blood. If the kidneys are not working well, the level of the creatinine is going to increase. And then, so we're going to be noting in the blood there's a higher level of creatinine, meaning there's a decreased function in kidney function. Now the creatinine, again, like I mentioned, is one of the basic lab tests. So whenever you're getting labs done, most likely your creatinine is being checked. And if you want to log in later on to your MyChart account, you can log into your kind of the basic metabolic panel or the complete metabolic panel, and you can look for it there. It's going to be the creatinine, and it's going to give you your value and also give you the normal range. Another question that I get, which is linked to the creatinine, is what is the GFR? Well, the GFR is the gamma filtration rate, which is how well the kidneys are filtering the blood. Okay, it is not directly measured from the blood. What we do is we measure the creatinine and then we have developed formulas that the computer does for us where they take the creatinine, the age, and the gender, and it gives us the GFR. So that's also something that you could see in your MyChart account. And it'll give you the different GFR levels and kind of the corresponding normal, not normal kidney function to that. Chronic kidney disease comes in stages. And we have five stages. So stage one, two, three, four, five. And I'll kind of, there's this line here, which I'll get into in a minute. But ultimately, stage one um, is a GFR over 90, and it means pretty much normal kidney function. Stage two is going to be mild decline. Stage three is where kind of we see a lot of patients. It's going to be mild to moderate decline. Four is severe loss, and the kidney, stage five is going to be kidney failure, and that's pretty much when we have dialysis. But you could keep a note on that uh, the difference between stage 2 and stage 3. So a GFR of 60 or above, even though it might be stage 1 or 2, it can still actually be normal. It depends if there's other markers of kidney injury. So someone could have a GFR of 70 and have no proteinuria, no, no, no other issues. They're actually not going to have chronic kidney disease. So this gets a little bit confusing at times, but we usually go over this during the appointments. But kind of keep a rough idea of the stages. One more thing that we check in the blood for kidney function is going to be protein. So protein in the urine is, is not a good sign. Uh, the body likes protein and the kidney's job is to reabsorb all the protein back. So there shouldn't be any in the urine. So what we do during our appointments is we're going to get the blood test for the creatinine and then we're also going to get a urine test to check how much protein there is. A higher level of protein in the urine is going to be a higher risk of progression to kidney disease. Then again, one of the more common questions is, well, why do I have chronic kidney disease? Well, first off, aging. Part of the aging process is there's going to be a small decline in kidney function. But decline is kind of small, so if there is a large decline, we have to look for other causes of kidney issues. And the most common ones in the population are going to be high blood pressure, diabetes, and also medications. So the medications that are a lot of risk factor for chronic kidney disease are going to be the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And there's really a lot of them, uh, but the basic ones could be ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Excedrin. So you really have to look at the bottle and see what kind of class of medication it is to figure out if it's an NSAID or not. Now this is one of maybe the most important questions. Is there anything I could do about chronic kidney disease? And that's yes. So we could work together to help delay or even prevent progression of chronic kidney disease, but it has to be found early and we have to kind of have a treatment plan for it. So identify why you have chronic kidney disease. When a patient comes to me, our big goal is going to be to figure out why they have it. Is it because of diabetes, which means we have to achieve better diabetic control? Is it because of high blood pressure? So do we lower the blood pressures to get that better? Does the patient have polycystic kidney disease? Because that's going to be a risk factor and a common cause of chronic kidney disease. There's also many other conditions. So first to find out you know, how we're going to treat it is to find out what's causing it. And then we have to also stop any offending medications, especially the NSAIDs.
Blood pressure control is very important. So as nephrologists, we actually do a lot of blood pressure. A lot of the medications that we use for blood pressure work through the kidneys, and for a lot of our patients, we need to have op optimal control to prevent progression. So the 2017 guidelines for blood pressures recommend a blood pressure 130 over 80 for chronic kidney disease patients. Okay, if patients are diabetic, the goal is still 130 over 80. And a lot of my elderly patients also ask, well, I'm older, what should my goal be? And if you're a community living patient, over 65, the goal is still 130 over 80. But of course, all these decisions can be personalized. So we're gonna take a factor look into any other medical issues and kind of figure out what the best goal would be for you. Then, a lot of medications are cleared through the kidneys. So if it's a certain medication, say metformin, then we have to renally dose it, meaning we have to adjust the dose of the medication to make sure it's appropriate for the level of kidney function the patient has. So that's something that we definitely do during all of our kidney appointments. Another thing that we need to look at is to, can we figure out if there's any medications that we could start that have been shown to delay progression of kidney disease? There's actually two classes, the um, ARBs and the, um, and the NSAIDs, I mean uh, ACE inhibitors, and we use those to help prevent progression of disease. We don't use them at the same time, so it's one or the other, and some patients would qualify for them and some don't, so we have to figure out which one, which patient uh, would be best ideal for it. Also, uh, important to decrease risk of heart attack and stroke. Patients with chronic kidney disease are at increased risk, so a lot of times um, the recommendation is for patients to be on stands. And a lot of times I, you know, patients would prefer not to be, it's an extra medication, it's a statin medication, but the, medica the recommendation is pretty broad. It's patients over 50 um, who have chronic kidney disease, defined as stage three or greater, should really be on a stand. And the evidence is um, strong that it would prevent uh, cardiovascular mortality and events. And it's also actually, you know, a lot of times the patients say, well, my cholesterol is actually good. And it's true. The cholesterol might be good, but stands have a lot of other benefits, even if it's the cholesterol is okay. Is there any special diet? This is a very common question. Um, the, there's, you know, there's some, a lot of talk about kidney diets and whatnot. The one that has been shown to be of benefit is actually a protein limiting diet, meaning that if your GFR is below 60, meaning chronic kidney disease stage three, then the protein intake for the day should be limited to your kilogram weight. So that's, you have to convert from pounds to kilograms and then multiply by 0.8. So a little bit of an example here. So if someone is 70 kilos, then you do 0.8. So it's around 56 grams of protein per day or less. It becomes a little difficult at times to find out, you know, how much protein you're taking in. If you're buying anything at the store, a lot of times the labels at the back will tell you how much protein. So if you're getting yogurt, it's going to tell you there's 10 grams of protein in there. Um, a lot of times some foods have extra protein in there and that, you know, general population would appreciate that. But for kidney patients, it's something that we should limit. So if you're picking between two foods, the one has more protein or less, you really should probably pick the lower one and keep in mind the total protein intake for the day. The other things that we look at is potassium and phosphorus in the diet. Those are more individualized because if someone's potassium level is okay, it doesn't really mean, you know, they don't really need to be on a, a potassium restricted diet. But as someone's kidney function does decrease, potassium becomes an issue a lot of times. So those patients would be on a lower potassium and a lower phosphorus diet. But this is more based on labs and more of an individualized decision. What about smoking? Well, I think this one's probably easy because stopping smoking is associated with low risk of progression of CKD and has been shown to help with a lot of factors. So definitely, if you're someone is still smoking and they have a CKD, definitely another good reason to stop. Total CO2. This one gets a little confusing during our appointments and try, try our best to kind of explain it. But uh, the kidney function is also important in terms of buffering the blood, meaning make sure the acid and the base are appropriate. So as the kidney function declines, there could be a little more acid in the blood. Um, so we, what we do is we try to treat that. We, we base that also on the total CO2. You can see that in your labs there when you look, we'll log into my chart, it'll give you the total CO2 in a normal range. And um, pretty much it's been shown that if when we treat the chronic metabolic acidosis, meaning the too much acid, with supplemental bicarb, there is actually a slower progression to chronic kidney disease. So it's definitely something we look for and try to treat. Bone health as well. 
So the kidney function um, is important to maintaining good bone health, and the parathyroid and the vitamin D levels are also and you have to be at appropriate levels to ensure optimal bone health. So as part of our kidney appointments, a lot of times I would check the parathyroid function and the vitamin Ds and make sure uh, those are appropriate and uh, prescribe medications if necessary for those. Anemia. So this one's gonna be uh, the blood counts. So again, the kidney is, uh, is kind of vital in making sure the hemoglobin, the blood level, is at an appropriate level. And as kidney function declines, there's gonna be a, um, a decrease in the blood level, meaning an anemia, anemia may form. So it's something that we have to keep track of. We're gonna have to check the iron, make sure the iron is well and replete. And we also have medications to help prescribe to help with the anemia levels to make sure they're okay and the hemoglobin is increased. As you can see, there's a lot of things that go on with, uh, with our chronic kidney patients. So the evidence has shown that an early referral to a nephrologist actually results in reduction in mortality and hospitalization. So if you think you may have chronic kidney disease or your primary may show that it looks like there's some issues, it's probably wise to see a nephrologist um, to help manage all the issues. And thank you so much. My name again was Dr. Kagan. I see patients in the Thousand Oaks and Westlake locations. Um, and now we're gonna do some questions from the audience. Thanks. So one of the questions, I guess is not so much a question, but more of a comment, is that they have a transplanted kidney. That's amazing. I'm glad to hear. So. Um, Sometimes, you know, if, if someone does develop a kidney failure and they ultimately stage five require dialysis, one of the alternatives to dialysis is gonna be a transplant. And it's good to hear that uh, there are some people in the audience who have that and are doing great with that. And that's also keep in mind. So if, if you are watching, you don't have any kidney failures and you're thinking you may wanna donate a kidney, that's absolutely great as well. And if uh, for some reason, you know, your, your um, CKD is progressing, uh, transplant is something to consider and you could always see us for that as well. The next question is milk good for stage five? Well, you know, milk and calcium and whatnot, I think it's gonna be based on your labs. Um, I probably wouldn't overdo it on the milk if you're stage five, uh, but you have to make sure that your labs are looking okay and that your calcium levels are not gonna be too high because of some of the medications that you're receiving. So it's a lot of times these are more personalized uh, decisions. And then how do you prevent kidney disease? So a lot of times the, the issues with the kidney disease is that there's other factors that are occurring that are causing the kidney problem, like high blood pressure, diabetes. So it's gonna be really important to have your annual physical and making sure that your primary doctor, you're working with your primary doctor to address all the other problems. Because if you have high blood pressure and you address it when, you're, when it's early and it's not an issue, then that decreases the odds of developing kidney disease. Similar to diabetes, if you have diabetes, make sure to have those A1Cs checked and make sure that they're controlled. If your A1Cs creeping up a bit, work really hard to get that better because as the A1C increases, there's higher odds of developing kidney disease and uh, protein in the urine. Those are the questions I have for now. Well, thank you so much for tuning in.